What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Planet Zoo. Today we are going to be doing something that has been highly requested of me to do and that is to make the buildings all pretty and beautiful and stuff or whatever. So I have a couple of ideas in mind on how I'm going to do this. The first idea is I want to take most if not all of my inspiration from this little concession stand area that I made a couple of episodes back. Oh god, what sort of issues are we having? Feeding station cannot be reached by keepers. What? What? Hang on, since when? I addressed this issue a long time ago, or at least I thought I did, and I made, a, <laughs> I, I guess I made a pit. I couldn't really smooth it out all that well because we already have the, uh, the path section here. But before the keeper was able to actually walk up on this path here, I didn't change anything other than the, the divot underneath that bridge. Good news, I have an idea. We need a habitat gate. I'm thinking if there's any way at all we could do like a habitat gate in between this path section, maybe, just maybe, we can get them to cross over that way. Otherwise, we may just have to move these barriers back a bit more. So I suppose let's try that first. If that's not working, then we can try to do the door trick. I don't think they'll be able to escape out of these doors, but I suppose that could be a potential issue down the road. We'll see what these torti do right here. Animal has escaped. That's not even, no, that's not, no, no. So if they even walk in this area, we're gonna get an alert basically saying that the animal has escaped. So let's edit the barrier again. This time, I'm going to select all of this and delete that because this area, I believe the doorway connects the two. So that's technically the barrier, right? Now it shouldn't say that they've escaped, but they can still walk over the path. Well, we'll come back to this. Hopefully the issue has been addressed well enough that we won't keep getting pop-ups for them. I have a couple of Ostriches that have matured now. So let's change this to ostriches. All right, sort this by maturity level. 17, 17, 17, here we go. These are the ones that just mature. They're 2.4 years old and none of them say release. If they say release, that means their stats are pretty well garbage. So we just go ahead and release them to the wild as soon as they mature. So these three we're going to send to the trade center. We're not going to trade them off. I'm kind of containing a lot of the babies so that they don't age in the trade center. So when their parents then unfortunately pass away, we can take the babies out. And uh, as long as they don't have the same parents, we should be able to keep the reproductive chain going and stuff and things or whatever. The zoo, by the way, the zoo is doing fantastic right now. We're getting a lot of lions. The babies that we have up here, their stats are pretty bad. So unfortunately we will have to release them. Whether or not the releasing conservation credit amount is higher than the amount we would get for trying to trade them. I don't know that just yet because they are still babies, but we'll see when the time comes if we wanna trade them off or if we just wanna straight release them. Just so we don't keep getting distracted, I do think I'm going to leave a good remainder of this episode on the pause screen, not only so we don't, you know, get interrupted from animals doing stuff and things, but I also want to make sure that we don't have any snow, we don't have any weather issues, rain is super annoying, and snow, well, it kind of makes it so you can't really see anything. Let's get started over here on the newest addition to the zoo, and that is the keeper hut and staff building that the monkey keeper inhabits, or I guess chimpanzee if you want to be real technical. All right, so first we're going to enter the architecture tab here. Now I need to find some sort of doorway that's actually going to look good. I went ahead and did this breeze block as the foundation, like the base layer of this building, just because that's what I used in the tunnel system. That is the same wall type that I used in their actual habitat. So I don't really know if anything in particular is going to look the best with this, but again, I am gonna use a lot of the inspiration from these concession stand buildings over there. So let's try to find some of that wood. If not, maybe we could do a metal doorway in the front, maybe make a nice looking awning. Dang, dude, I've never even noticed any of this stuff. That's insane. Look at that thing. That's like the coolest looking entrance I think I've ever seen. What, dude? When did we unlock this stuff? Like this looks like some train station material right here. That's freaking sweet. Maybe if we do a train station later on, we could 
use some of these but for right now we're still on the hunt for that metal archway here we have some concrete i want to say it was metal plank does that sound right nope that definitely ain't it son definitely ain't it metal clad yes that's the one metal clad perfect right there looks pretty good so that's what we're gonna do on the front I think it's gonna turn out pretty well. It looks decent with the breeze block foundation that we have there. And now for the walls, we're gonna use this horizontal wooden plank. And yes, for most of the buildings, I do think that this is the design we're going to go with just because it's very simplistic, yet very modern, very visually appealing. All right, little window there in the back. Looks pretty nice. So how did we go about doing the roof again? Let's head on over here and see, I think, I think that is this one, right? Yes, vertical wooden plank, got it. Oh, that's right, I used this one because it was super thin. It's gonna be very difficult for me to incorporate these two separate buildings together into one larger looking building. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is just make them look nice by themselves. Now you might be thinking the roof is done. Boy, it is far from done. We gotta do this uh, this roof trim, but I, I don't remember which one I was using. Was it the classic one? No, definitely didn't use that. The one that I used was very, very flat. This doesn't really look that bad, but it doesn't exactly blend into the roof that we have installed. What are, what are our thoughts on this? I kind of like it. The only problem with this one would be that we don't have anything to fill the corners with, so it may end up looking kind of weird. But we could also use the actual corner pieces for the roof, which doesn't look all that bad. I don't love how they meet on the end. What if we do the largest eave on this one? You know, I kind of dig that. I kind of dig this. So what would it look like if we rotated it all around and tried to do all of the corners because like I said they don't have a actual corner section I'm not getting any weird texture clipping in this I do think it looks pretty nice it's different I will say that it's definitely different than the other buildings that we did again just for reference over here we went for more of the flat roof style with no eaves we just used like a, I think this is wood like a wood trim around the exterior of it I really really like how these came out so I, I do kind of want to take some notes from them but at the same time since these buildings are off by themselves they don't really have a whole lot of shape to them I think this is probably our best bet so now I'm going to replicate exactly what I did for this one but on the staff building I know very very exciting stuff here but you guys requested it so I'm I'm just doing as I'm told at this point And just like that, we have two kind of weird looking buildings. I don't really know how I feel about it just yet, but after we get the buildings figured out, I'll come through, do a quick time lapse of me just adding a bunch of decorations, trees, shrubs, bushes, flowers, you name it. I gotta, I gotta church things up a little bit. It is looking a little bland. But now that we sort of have this idea of what we want to go with, what the roof is going to look like, I can now go around and make all of the staff buildings that we have kind of similar to this. There are a couple that we may have to do something different on. Like these, for example, they're not exactly aligned with one another, so it may be a little challenging to do the roof on these ones. However, I can also just delete a couple of buildings and re-add them in the same grid as one of the buildings and kind of square everything up that way maybe we can group these three right here into one big building and things might look a little bit nicer so let's go ahead and try that here before i get too carried away with everything else i'm going to use the staff building as the, the grid here so we have the keeper hut for i believe that's the flamingos and then we have the keeper hut for the ostriches so let's go ahead and delete both of those gonna hop into staff paths really quick i don't like how that's there so I'm going to do one of these numbers really quick. We have to select this building and we're going to go into the edit mode. That's going to pop us into the same grid section that the staff building is using. However, being as it is a, I would say, two by one type of building, think like Legos here, right? The grid isn't gonna be split down the middle right here. So we're not gonna be able to put a one by one building and a one by one building here. I don't think. We'll see if it plays out that way. So under facilities, I'm going to go to staff facilities and we are going to take blueprints off. So we need two of these keeper huts. Yes, I realize we could probably use a large keeper hut, but this area is very, very small and I just don't think it would look the greatest. 
So for the Flamingos, their Keeper Hut's gonna be right here. And then for the Ostriches, we're gonna place that down right there. And look at that. Now it's one big square block section and we can add our surrounding walls around that. It should look pretty nice. Now we'll hop back into construction mode here and we'll see if we can't get this thing looking pretty dope. Dude, I kind of dig this. I really kind of dig this. So now we have our staff room right here. It's got the window in the back. You can kind of see this fence could use some work. We might have to call one of our mechanics out to this one and uh, see if he can't fix that gate for us. It's definitely got a pretty good size hole in it from the llamas. And then these windows for the keeper huts, unfortunately, they are going to be looking in at nothing but a wall. I don't think they're gonna care too much though. It's really not that bad. Now we're gonna come over here to this building and literally do the same thing i know shocker right and there we go boys and girls dude we're doing so well we're doing so well so already you can just start to get that vibe that this is a legitimate zoo and there are employees here and we do care about how our buildings look but that's not exactly our main focus the main focus is to maximize profits and have some healthy animals that's really about it that's what it kind of boils down to I did just notice this over here and I hate that. Dude, when the when the ground clips through your food bowls, disgusting. All right, moving right along here, I'm going to reconfigure this building, this building, this building, this building, the toilet block even, I know, these two buildings and probably all of these buildings as well. I might group these two into one. I might also try to group these two into one, but these other ones would be fine solo. Aw, oh, shoot, man. The bathroom's surprisingly difficult because I don't have a archway that is actually wide enough to be an arch for two doorway openings, which is really unfortunate, but I'm gonna try my best. I'm going to see if there's something that I could use. We do have this metal clad. If I did that just a little bit lower than normal, I think we could get away with rolling with that. It's looking really good, dude. It's looking really good. At least you don't see just like two by fours in insulation anymore, which is what's behind the walls that we just put down. For reference, I'm talking about this right here. I'm talking this stick figure looking building. Like it, it doesn't it doesn't look great. I I could admit that, but I'm fixing it now. Okay, this tree is starting to bug me a little bit. I'm going to back this tree up just a tad because it was literally inside of this room. And then this tree right here, we're gonna back it up just a tad as well. Go about there, perfect. That looks miles better. And then same thing with this one, dude. What was I thinking? Did I just not care? Yeah, that's, that's probably it to be honest. And then let's move this one to about here. There we go. So now those buildings that we do have windows on the backside of, they're not gonna be staring at a tree trunk. It should look a little bit nicer for them. Not that they actually care, but I'm just trying to be a nice person like that. All right, onto the next set of buildings. These two, it is a little difficult for me to think of what I wanna do, just because they are at such weird angles to one another. So I think what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna do the same thing that I've been doing on all of these other buildings, but, since the roof lining right here at the front would probably, you know, connect, it would probably intersect the other building. I'm gonna move this smaller tree in the back to about right there, and we're actually going to move over this building. Just, I mean, ever so slightly, ever so slightly. You won't even notice that it's moved. You might notice that it's moved a little bit. Go, now go into paths here, and we're going to delete that path section, and... Why you no know, give me staff path? There we go. We're gonna make a new path. Bada boom, bada bing. Dude, that's what I'm talking about. Like this, is, it's too easy. It's too easy. I don't like that at all. Why, why have you done this? It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. You can't be a perfectionist in these games. You will literally sit here for hours at a time. All right, back to it. We gotta keep going. We got many, many, many more buildings to go here.
Dudes and dudettes, the deed is now finally done. The only problem is I did have to delete quite a few of those keeper huts, which is a problem for a couple of reasons. One, our keepers don't know where their new keeper hut is. Two, I don't know if you delete a keeper hut and the keepers inside of it, does it fire them? Anyways, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna continue on here. So we're going to have to open up our where is it? Where is it? Work zones. One minute thirty-seven seconds later. Alright. Dude, we're all set. We are all set. This building actually, I think, turned out to be my favorite. Just because it uses all three of those like one by one buildings. So over here. We have a keeper hut here. We have another keeper hut, which this is the cool part, in my opinion, is that the mechanic workshop and this keeper hut have windows that look into the other's room, which I don't know. That just seems like it's kind of a cool little thing. You know, maybe maybe they're good buds. Maybe they're good buds and they're like, hey, man, how's your day going? Maybe they open up their windows, have a good chat. But I really do like the shape of that one. The other ones are pretty basic for the most part. There's nothing really special about them. These two, oh great, fighting for alpha status. Western chimpanzees, again, they never stop. The vet research facility and just the vet facility in general also kind of look pretty nice, I suppose. Mainly just because they have the, the two windows in the back, I think it looks pretty nice. Bathroom didn't turn out too bad. All of these buildings pretty much look the same. And then we have this nice little block right there, as well as this block clear out here. So that about wraps it up for the, the building maintenance that needed to be done. It did, it did need to be done, I can admit that. But like I had mentioned, I had to wait until I had the architectural materials that I would need to make these buildings look good. I didn't want everything to turn out looking like this dome does over here. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, although it could have been a lot worse. And speaking of the dome, I haven't gotten any new notifications about the tortoises, the tortai escaping. So I think we fixed that problem solved. We do have a couple of visitors though. Oh my god, we have three visitors. I haven't even said hello to you guys. I'm so sorry. Thank you all so much for coming by the zoo. Come check out the western chimpanzees, please. They don't get enough attention. They're just way too far out here. Nobody wants to walk this far. All right, now may be a good time for me to start the time lapse. I'm gonna go around, add some trees, shrubbery, bushes, plants in general. I'm just gonna add some decorations around the buildings and maybe liven them up a little bit, especially these two out here. They're looking very, very bare. So let the time lapse commence. Okay guys, after a little under an hour and a half, I have finally completed enough decoration to the point of where I really don't feel like doing anymore, like I'm about to fall asleep here. That's how time consuming and tedious this is, but I do think the end result here is pretty well worth it. It definitely livens a lot of the spaces up, especially this area. Looks 
incredible. I, I don't know how else to explain it. We got some acai palms. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. We got aloe plants. We got elephant ears. We got literally like at almost every type of greenery is in this area. And I think it looks fantastic. Oh God. Oh my God. We're going to have so many tortoise here in a few minutes. A lot of them have uh, started to mature, which normally I'd be like, yeah, heck yeah. Maturing of animals, but Look at how many we have. And they have so many bebe in such a short amount of time that if one of them is about to mature, odds are at least 10, if not more, are about to mature. So good handful of these bad boy billies are gonna have to get released to the wild here very, very soon. Now I did not do this in the time-lapse, but I did get some comments on the monkey exhibit. I think that was the last episode. I really can't remember. Um, and people suggested that I, you know, put some plants in the chimpanzees exhibit. And I did do that. I did it off camera, but their welfare is now through the roof. If you need some proof, I'll focus in here on ver, ver, Burkoff. I don't know. He's the alpha right now. Uh, we, we actually purchased him from a different zoo. Habitat, 89%. Hard shelter 49. So hard shelters are only a limiting factor here for the overall welfare of our chimpanzees, but they're doing fantastic now that we have a couple of plants in there and now it's gonna start raining. Great. This keeper area right here, I didn't really feel the need to add any more plants into because I did actually do a lot of this off camera. And it turned out okay. It's very repetitive though, and kind of looks gross. So I ended up just kind of outlining the entire thing in uh, topiary, sort of the, the trimmed bushes, like the, the shaped bushes and stuff. But this area over here, I think turned out the best. It's very simple, yet it uses a lot of desert plants. It uses uh, Japanese, we got the cherry blossoms back in here. We have the lobster claw, which I didn't even know was a real plant until a few minutes ago, but those are pretty dope. I definitely like the look of them. So I added a few of those in here. Over here, we have a couple of variations of cacti, whatever the heck this thing is, a puya plant. Sure, why not? We got it all over here, ladies and gents. And then this area, I did a nice line of aloe in the front. Good variety of plants back in there. And then over here, again, I have this sort of deserty type of area with a, looks like a tree that's like starving for water. It's actually a Himalayan birch tree. We got a palm over here, a date palm, two broken or I guess dead Japanese cherry blossoms, which look kind of cool. But I'm, I'm definitely a fan. I think that although yes, it's a lot of work and it does take literally forever, it does change the overall view of the zoo. And I know that a couple of these buildings do have a scenery impact, which we weren't exactly utilizing at all previously. So now that we are utilizing a little bit of that scenery impact, I do think our employees and our guests are overall going to be a lot happier now that there's some scenery around the exhibits, around the buildings. Now I did consider putting some plants in this area in between where the staff path and the regular guest path meet. However, I didn't really feel like doing it, to be completely honest. That's something maybe I'll do off camera, who knows. But if you guys remember from a few episodes back when we were sort of modifying the flamingo exhibit, I removed all the buildings that used to surround this to make the food courts out there. And when I went to go put new buildings back, for whatever reason, it's not letting me do anything. So we had to leave it pretty bare. I think I'm going to continue to leave it bare until we absolutely have to do something about it. But be sure to let me know what you guys think of the new decorations in the zoo. I know this was highly requested. Hopefully I came through and uh, gave you some inspiration for your own zoo if you are playing this game yourself but I do think I'm going to wind things down here. So if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, to help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.